a winter Sunday in a small town in the Italian Apennine Mountains. This horse race is a local challenge event between rival clubs. The competitors gallop through the crowded streets at breakneck speed. There are no safety measures and the danger element is ignored. of a mortal accident is taken for granted. Similar events are held all year round, and in particular on local patron saints' days. of rough-and-tumble entertainment. But the star attraction is always a death-defying horseback event. In these isolated, sleepy hill towns, the horse race is a stimulating way of blowing off steam after the monotony of a week's hard work. In certain towns of central Italy, the best riders of each club race through the empty streets every Sunday at dawn. A rigorous training program to prepare for the great spring and summer race meetings. When the streets and squares of bustling provincial capitals will become the venue of spectacular and often disastrous accidents. The early morning riders think ahead to the emotional impact of the day of the big race. A dream come true, or a nightmare. Races without rules. Unrestrained tests of speed with a risk factor sanctioned by ancient traditions. death-defying version of the sport of kings that has been for centuries the most popular sporting attraction of a proud and violent world. Bred Arabian horses on a stud farm in Andalusia in southern Spain.
The most promising yearlings will be selected for the racing stables and for breeding. The others are destined for a high-risk equestrian event and are trained not to be afraid of bulls. They learn complicated steps called acrosso and derribo, demonstrations of nimble-footed dexterity that may one day save the life not only of the horse itself, but also of the rider, when the time comes to make a debut in the Plaza de Toros, the bull ring. Andalusia is the only area in the world where horses are trained to perform exercises like the crab-style gallop. The bond that unites man, the horse, and the bull has its origins in the distant past. The art of bullfighting is conditioned by laws governing behavior, dress, and the spirit of competition that are observed to the letter by every caballero, no matter how noble or humble his origins are. These laws are epitomized in the weekly exhibition of courage and skill that takes place before a capacity audience every Sunday in the bull ring. The bull, the horse, and man united in a common destiny that must inevitably lead to death. As we analyze the role of the horse in the bull ring, it is difficult not to pass judgment on this highly stylized blood sport that appeals to the basest instincts in all of us. An unwritten pact, accepted by the whole world. The pact of the bull ring. More than a test of courage, Bullfighting is a mercenary challenge to death, with few or no redeeming qualities. The horse and the rider are involved from beginning to end. Their first job is to tire the bull before the matador takes over. In the past, as this old film clip from our archives of time shows, the confrontation between man and bull had moments of great nobility an exhibition of raw courage with no gimmicks that redeemed the violence. Today, the era of the great toreros is only a memory. We can admire the style of one of the greatest bullfighters of all time, a style that the young fighters of today strive in vain to imitate. The legendary Manoletti, who died in the ring where he had killed with such cold intelligence and detached courage. A los cinquas de la tarde, at five in the afternoon, the show is over. The horse once again plays a leading role. Exhibitions of equestrian dexterity are commonplace in all those countries influenced by the Spanish tradition. In Mexico, for example, teams of men and women match their ability in spectacular demonstrations. Feats of skill performed by a horseman and his mount in the Plaza de Torres. In this case, there is not the violence and cruelty of the bullfight. Maybe the main reason why these performances are so appreciated by the crowd. Bringing down a bull with seemingly effortless skill was, and still is, part of the daily routine for the cowboys of the so-called New World. And shows like this are highly popular in certain parts of America. This is a rodeo staged by Mexican cowboys. They defy death to entertain the crowd with a fine sense of rhythm and well-dosed touches of comedy. Shows like 
like this serve to remind us of those bygone days in which the horse was above all man's faithful workmate. This rapport is re-evoked in a folk dance called Surve Scari, which means man-horse. A lively musical tribute to a companion who has played an indispensable role in man's progress through the ages. Without the horse, early man would never have so successfully conquered his environment, or traveled the world, or cultivated his fields, created with years of patient labor, from those wide open spaces that were once the indisputed domain of large herds of wild horses. In most of Europe, such vast expanses of virgin territory are almost non-existent. But on this huge estate in Hungary, horses are raised in their natural environment and run more or less wild. Every summer, an annual roundup takes place of herds of Lipizzaners, Europe's most famous breed of horse. There are many large horse ranches in the world, usually in isolated, almost inaccessible areas, and on islands miles from anywhere in the middle of the ocean. Poets have often referred to the foam-flecked waves on rough seas as white horses, perhaps because they symbolize endurance and strength. of a succession of white horses, we arrive at Easter Island in the South Pacific to visit one of the world's most unusual horse ranches. Here, in the shadow of huge stone statues that are evidence of a mysterious migration of the Polynesian people who didn't know of the existence of horses, Chilean horse breeders raise large herds of Busadora horses. The Busadora being Chile's most sought after and reliable workhorse. Another island, this time Sardinia in the Mediterranean Sea, we find the habitat of Europe's last herd of completely free wild horses. They are known as digestory ponies. The name comes from the local name for the area in which they live. It is presumed that this robust mountain pony is descended from a cargo of horses en route by sea many centuries ago as a gift to a European monarch from an Arab sheep. When the ship foundered on the rocky Sardinian coast, some of the horses probably survived and reproduced to populate this barren and in those days uninhabited region. Today, Sardinian shepherds sometimes manage to catch young ponies, which they then try to sell to circuses or private breeders. But the little digesteries have run wild for hundreds of years and are extremely difficult to break and train. They are now protected by law and it is forbidden to catch them. 
although the law is unfortunately not always enforced. We stay in Sardinia to follow the king of this local pageant, a king who assumes his full authority after investiture by riding through the streets on horseback. This is the famous Sartiglia pageant that takes place every year in Oristano and culminates in an equestrian event that calls for exceptional skill. By slowing down the final seconds of the competitor's breakneck gallop, we can get a clear view of the object of the contest. At full gallop, the rider must run his sword through the hole in the center of a star dangling from a wire strung across the street. Another example of the horse as man's companion in a test of skill. In industrialized countries, it is only on such occasions that the horse wins back his time-honored role as man's sturdy, faithful, and unselfish friend. In our modern world, the engine has forced the horse into retirement after centuries of reliable service as the only means of transportation between villages, towns, and countries with the capacity to pull heavy loads over often difficult terrain in underdeveloped areas. Until a short time ago, there were still remote corners of Europe in which the horse was indispensable as a work companion. This is a forest in the most northern part of Sweden, where Matthias horses, a particularly robust breed of draft horse with exceptional resistance in cold weather, were practically irreplaceable in daily logging operations. At the other extremity of Europe, we are now in the Puglia region of southern Italy, the horse provided an essential source of energy for harvesting and in the fields. These fields among the olive trees are in Greece, and the horse was as important here as in millet fields reclaimed from the desert. This is the oasis of Gerdaya in the Sahara Desert. But even here, the age-old rapport between man and the horse has lost its significance in the face of progress. Delving into our archives of time, we discovered this interesting clip filmed more than 40 years ago on the South American Pampas. We are watching a group of gauchos on horseback in an ostrich chase. weapon they use to capture the ungainly birds is the famous Boliodoris that wraps around the legs of the escaping prey but never kills it. When a gaucho brought down an ostrich, he pulled out its tail feathers and let it go so that it could breed and provide more feathers for the following year. Unfortunately, this is now a scene from the past, and these heavy horse carts have been abandoned in favor of trucks, bulldozers, and hovercraft. The day of the horse as a primary means of locomotion is over here, just as it is almost everywhere else. In warfare, too, the horse has been forced to relinquish its once dominating role. Today, man and horse play at war as in this annual tournament in Provence in the south of France. 
galloping hooves that re-evoke historical skirmishes and battles. For the nomadic hordes that invaded Europe from the east, it was common practice for a horseman who died in combat to be buried with his horse. This is the tomb of a 12th century Hungarian cavalier that was discovered recently near Budapest. His bones and those of his horse lie together in the ground. This is a cavalry unit still in service in the army of a country in the Middle East. Descendants of the Arabian horsemen who made their presence felt all over the Mediterranean, from Africa to the frontiers of Asia and large areas of southern Europe. They seem to rise out of nothing to invade countries that were the cradles of great civilizations that had become decadent and weak, such as the great Byzantine Empire. Sculptures over a thousand years old were inspired by the Arabian conquest. For 400 years, from the 7th century to the 10th, the Arabs invaded in every direction. They won victory after victory, thanks to an almost perfect understanding between the horse soldier and his mount, and an indomitable love of fighting that was born of unshakable faith in one indivisible and victorious God. A faith that was fomented daily by five fervent prayer sessions. Speed, maneuverability, and endurance made the Arabian cavalry unbeatable and allowed them to spread the word of their god to the most western point of the known world. It was here, overlooking the Atlantic Ocean, that the noble Okba, leader of an intrepid Arabian cavalry unit, exclaimed, My God, as you are my witness, I swear that if there were a way, I would carry your truth to the other side of this immense expanse of water. In the east, the Islamic conquest reached as far as the snow-capped mountains of Hindu Kush. In this desolate area where the snow never melts, the invading hordes on horseback who raised the green flag of the Prophet were no longer pure Arabs, but they had inherited the Arabian fighting spirit and incredible equestrian skill. Those nomadic warriors were the ancestors of today's Afghans. A proud and indomitable people who thrive on death-defying feats of courage as this scene from the archives of time will show. In the days of the great battles between the true believers and the infidels, this test of skill was devised as a cavalry training exercise. Afghans are an aggressive, warlike race who defend their country with ferocious perseverance. In moments of peace, the Afghan warrior's favorite pastime is competing in competitions on horseback. <laughs> The most famous of these events is the Buskashi, or Goat Goal. This rough and dangerous sport was first practiced by the Mongolians. We were privileged to be able to film one of the last great Buskashi contests. 
Wuskashi is a team sport in which the object is to carry the body of a dead goat across a pre-established goal line. team must prevent this in any way possible in a violent tussle on horseback that has few rules and no regard for the spectators. In this case, a man is trampled under our very eyes. players are expert horsemen, there are frequent falls, and injuries are often fatal. human life counts less than the result. A horrifying tribute to all those who compete in equestrian events with such a high risk factor that the lives of the competitors are constantly at stake.